welcome back to my channel. It's time for the haul video. I know, we all love those haul videos. We all say we're not going to buy things, and then we do, and then we always apologize for our behavior. <laughs> like I said in my last one, though, as the jets fly by, because of course, um, I am kind of cutting back on what I buy and focusing more on the quality of the items. Um, not to be sound snob nose-ish nose about that. All I mean is I'm trying to save my, my pennies and invest in things I really want that I could buy like five budget things or save and buy that. Does that make sense? I have quite a bit here. Um, some of it is Happy Mail, of course. Uh, so it's not all me. Um, <laughs> so, like how I throw that out there. It's not me. Uh, and then some of it is items I got from my art boxes. I did get art snacks and um, smart art this month. I haven't gotten my scrawler box yet uh, as the time I'm recording this. And I, as I understand it, most of us haven't. Probably going to miss that whole challenge, but um, I got the art boxes. I just got too busy to deal with those this month. Um, I'm going to do the challenges probably later. It was just a crazy month getting everyone ready for back to school. So I'm going to show you what came in those boxes first. That way you have an idea. Um, and then starting next month, I will do unboxing and the challenges on camera. Uh, my biggest challenge right now is I'm running out of room for content because I post every day and I don't have enough spaces. Mm. Uh, so maybe I'll make a combo of like all my months spread. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, so first things first, let's start with the subscription boxes. That way I can get those out of the way. My desk is a freaking um, art supply chaos storm because of everything I have next to me. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Now, one thing, I have a lot of fall books that I purchased or PDFs. They are not included in this video. I'm actually making my fall haul video probably later today after this. So keep an eye out for the fall haul. That will be totally different. That will focus on all of my fall books and that will include books that will be colored in for the next couple of months. So let me grab my art boxes and let's go from there. Okay, the first box I got was my art snacks box. Actually, I shouldn't say first, they came on the same day. Uh, excuse the chaos up in here. <laughs> Anyway, um, so this box came with quite a few goodies, actually. Uh, so it came with an assortment of Stabilo fine liners that I have here, and I will actually be shoving back into the packaging, possibly not on camera, because this could get really boring really fast, but let's just try it. <laughs> okay, so a bunch of Stabilo fine liners, 0.4 millimeter, I mean, we're talking fine. And then King Art, I got four King Art brush pens. These are water-based. I didn't even know King Art made these, um, but they these came as part of the challenge package. And then a Copic. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, when I got this Copic and I opened the package, I legit panic attacked. Um, let me get this box out of the way. And you're, uh, as you guys know, Oh, I had a fine liner escape me in the box. Um, as you guys know, I'm collecting Copics. I collect so many per month. So I panicked. I was like, oh my gosh, please don't be one I have already purchased. And I had just placed my order with Cozy Scrapbooking. So I was like, please don't be a Copic that I just ordered. It wasn't. I don't have B06. I am over the moon because I just got one that I needed. So I was like, ah! <laughs> so... I did get Copic, and then this really cool mechanical pencil, it has an eraser, um, and because I'm Art Snacks Plus, I got a full-size media. Now, this is the Render Sketchbook, which is the most amazing sketchbook of my life. Um, it claimed to be bleed-through, and let's ignore that. <laughs> I was trying. The challenge was to copy this guy's artwork, which is very 
very interesting. <laughs> And I was, I took it way too literal, but I have tons of layers on the other side and look, no bleed through. Um, same thing over here. I was doing some testing. I even kept going with this peacock blue. Just look it. I'm putting this on thick because these are refill, refillable. <laughs> Let's use the chisel side though so I don't kill my brush now. Okay, so look, I'm putting down ridiculous amount of marker that's like quadruple layered look at that isn't that cool um yeah these are expensive but I'm gonna buy more um so yeah I'm going to do the challenge for this uh I actually came up with an idea the other day uh, I can't share it um and I need to hurry and get it up there before the end of August so Yep, I got all this from my Art Snack subscription box. So, Art Snacks Plus, there's a difference between the two. Um, I think if you're not Plus, you only got one Stabilo, and then you didn't get the extra packages of them, and then you didn't get the render book. So, I got four water based brush pens, the Stabilo markers, a Copic sketch, a mechanical pencil, the one extra Stabilo, and a render sketchbook that you can literally do marker sketches on both sides. Um, yeah, that is definitely worth the price tag there. So thank you, Art Snacks. Woo! <laughs> Let me set that off to the side somewhere. Oh my gosh, this is gonna get messy. Okay. Next was Smart Art. Um, this one, oh my goodness. I actually filmed an unboxing and then erased it. Fun fact. So, I'm going to keep those there. I have, I'm actually impressed at all of the stuff they packed into this box. Um, this is a monster box. Hang on a sec. So, I've got paints, a brush cleaner apparatus with brush cleaner liquid, because that would just make sense. Some brushes. A palette. They did leave a note because in the pamphlet it said you were going to get this marvelous folding travel palette and instead you got this thing that I'm pretty sure you could get in a five pack at the dollar store. Um, <laughs> so they apologized for that. Um, and then I got a white charcoal pen and you're going to see why a white charcoal pen in a minute. Oh, sorry, it's not easy to maneuver because I've got as you can see here it's an 8 by 10 black canvas acid free 100% cotton it's ready to use it has been primed for you so see how it's... and here are these ones so I'm not familiar with oil paints um they kind of scare me so I might be messaging Dan <laughs> Dan who does the oil paints here on YouTube and be like what is this <laughs> <laughs> but these are water mixable oil paints. Does that not sound contradictory? Oil and water? Um, I have not heard of this brand, but again, I know nothing about oil paints. So they sent a variety of colors, but here's the tubes. They are, what size are these? 0.7, so 20 mLs. That's, that's a big tube. Um, so these are 20 ml tubes. They are... They're metal tubes. Oh my gosh, these lids. Yep, so you got your cap. Um, and then they sent, let's see, so it has the light fast rating, transparency, and their number. I don't think they're going to have like, I mean, I'm familiar with watercolors, not oil. But do oils use the same pigment numbers? I literally don't know. I'm asking you guys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they have varying transparency ratings and light fast ratings uh, in here. But I'm very, very interested to see uh, with the with the oil being water mixable. Um, I don't know if that makes them easier or harder to deal with. And then I'll show you right here on the side. So I got a white, a yellow, a red, a blue, a green, and a brown. So I can mix just about anything I want using those colors. Um, do they have anything on the back here? Brush strokes, 
gives you the natural gloss of traditional oil paints. They dry relatively quickly, but it says you can mix them with water so you no longer have to use solvents. So that would be really good um, because that's one thing that's kind of always scared me about oil paints is the solvents. Um, I rarely use solvents with pencils for that reason alone. So yeah, I, I do plan to play with these even if I end up not doing their challenge. Um, if anyone did do the smart art, let me know what you what you found with these. Um, either way, I just added something fun to my art collection because like I said, I do adult coloring, but I, I really like all art and almost everything I get from here can be used in an adult coloring book, believe it or not. Um, obviously not the canvas, but I mean the brushes, brush cleaner to clean off all my brushes. Um, these oil paints can go in a coloring book. I've seen it done. <laughs> so it's not like I just got a bunch of stuff I can't use. Where am I going to put this though? That's the... <laughs> like, ah! But look at all this stuff. I mean, a brush cleaner, which is cool because I've always wanted one of these. The solution, brushes, a palette, four canvases, um, six colors, which are 20 ml tubes, a white charcoal pen, that's a lot. Um, now, granted, you know, they always inflate the pricing on their brochures, making you feel like you just won the lottery. But the fact that they curate this and create projects with it, they deserve a little increase in the price. All right, on to stuff that's not from subscription box. Oops. Amazon Basics Permanent Markers. I just wanted to try them. <laughs> no reason. They were on sale. Freaking lightning deals. Get me every time. Um, and they came kind of late, actually. They took for flipping ever. Thanks, Amazon. So, you know, A is for August. But I, I want to try these in some of my mandalas and just kind of blend them. I don't want to use my Copics and alcohol markers because I, I like to just stick to the, pa or the paper they come in, which is Create Space. Um, so, yeah. I got these to do that and then mix in my glitter gel pens. Their packaging is just so underwhelming, though. But what I plan to do is... Oh, my gosh. Let me just reopen it and fly them everywhere. So these are all different colors. But what I'm going to do is um, take a little swatch and just tape it around the lid and stick them in my marker storage along with all my other markers. And I think it's 24 colors. Yeah, 24. We'll see how they work. They'll just be fun, extra to play around with. Okay. I got some blending tools. I already had blending tools, but the domes seem to be the new thing. So I got the blending domes. I did get a few spares because they had a package set on scrapbook.com. I will leave links to all of this below. Holy moly. I normally don't do that, but I get a lot of you that have asked um, where they can buy it or the easiest way to buy it. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so this haul video will be extra long in editing, but yeah, they had a, a package you could buy with the refills. So I did that. Um, let's see. I do have some stamping stuff here. So let me pull that out first. I have like just piles scattered all over my desk mixed in with other stuff. Okay, so from scrapbook.com also, I got the Waffle Flower Swatch Stamps, and then I got the VersaFine in Nocturne, so it's black. Um, this is pigment ink. It's waterproof, alcohol marker proof. You can just ride over it, and that's what you want for these swatches. Um, now, this is the watercolor swatch, and it even has a stamp for pigment, uh, light fast reading, transparency, same thing over here though, this does have a lot of information that applies to watercolor, but just different kind of swatches, you know. So I bought these because it makes it a lot easier to just stamp out your um, swatch pages instead of custom making them. I was custom making them, but it just got so time consuming, for lack of a better word. All right, so this is some Happy Mail. Oops, let's turn it around. So the wonderful Evelyn um, sent me. <laughs> so how this started? Let's do, let's do backstory first. Um, 
I forget, we were on someone's live stream, and Evelyn was asking about Mod Podge glitter, and I said, oh, they have the Extreme Glitter. Um, a few hauls ago, you guys might have remembered me grabbing that. And then she had found it, and she was like, oh, did you know they have Hologram and Gold and, and in Mega Glitter? <laughs> I don't know the difference between Extreme and Mega, but they both sound glorious. Um, and so I was like, oh, I didn't know they had those. So that sneaky woman sent me some. <laughs> so thank you, Evelyn. Um, this hologram one looks killer. I can't wait to play with these. And this gold, um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me zoom it in a little more. Maybe. Um, let me show you from the bottom here. Do you see that thick amount of gold in there? Like, that is some chunks of gold. And the hologram... I think it's kind of gonna, you know, have that holographic effect. But either way, I will play with these and then, you know, probably do a demo. Maybe we'll just have a big old glitter fest day of some sort. Um, but yeah, thank you, Evelyn, my dear, for sending these to me. Okay, I'm just kind of grab grabbing it random today because <laughs> it's all randomly like all over. So I've been slowly collecting different types of aqua brush water brushes, not to be confused with watercolor brushes. One is a brush, one is a brush with a water well. Um, so I've always wanted to try the Pentel ones and I finally got those. I also plan to order a few more and then I'm going to do a comparison video of like all the different brushes. You know, I do have the Kiritake Zig brushes. Um, I have the Caran d'Ache and a cheap brand and an Art and Fly. But yeah, I'm going to collect a few more and kind of compare them all and let you know what I think. So I'm excited to try these ones. I've seen quite a few people use them and they seem to enjoy it. So, all right. I got some happy mail from my lovely friend Ryan. Hang on. I got to make sure I get them all out. Okay. So, my favorite distress ink color is salvaged patina because it is the closest thing to robin's egg blue that i've ever seen and ryan is sneaky and knows these things um and he knew i had the ink pad obviously but he knew i wouldn't have the other parts of the package so he sent me the distress uh, spray stain i can never say that as one word evenly the oxide spray stain and then the Distress Paint, which, by the way, they're not going to make much longer. So if you want the paints, you better hop on that. And then the Oxide. So thank you, Ryan, my dear, my YouTube hubby, as he's been called now. Um, I, can't wait to, I can't wait to go spray with these. These spray things, I'm going to start collecting these because I didn't even know this was a thing. This is what happens when you watch scrapbookers and card makers. You find all this stuff. But these would be awesome for coloring book backgrounds. Just the splatter and, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> it's going to get messy up in here, folks. All right. Let me set those to the side. Okay. I did get the scrapbook.com um, mat. This is a silicone mat. It's kind of like a miracle mat. Hang on a sec, if it'll come out. Ugh. So this bad boy, for one thing, is really awkward to show on camera. Okay, it's going to collect all my dog hair. That's just a reality of life. So you put something on here and it is not going to slide anywhere. Like that is one thing you need to know. Like put this down. Like, I can't even move it. So that's awesome, because if you're working on something, it is, it's on there. But you can paint an ink on this, and you just wipe it up. Um, you can use it on top of your Tim Holtz mat, uh, but it gives you, like, that uh, surface. So that was one reason I really wanted to grab that, because I do have the Tim Holtz mat that you can ink and all that stuff on it, too. But that, everything, I can't even get this back in here. Everything just glides on the, the surface of that thing. I mean, it's a hot mess, guys. <laughs> so I'm throwing trash and supplies behind me to my bed back there. <laughs> In case you're curious what all the noise is. So yeah, I had gotten that. Speaking of this book, this was actually given to me by a family friend, Kristen. 
And it turns out, so um, the artist for this, she is on Etsy. Um, she's a fashion school student, if I, if I got that right. So she has this runway fashion coloring book. Now, let me get my uh, private note. I always save my notes um, in there just so I always remember who gives it to me. So she only has, um, well, when I looked yesterday, three copies left in her Etsy store. I will still link it below. However, I did reach out to her asking her permission to show this, you know, because I always like to check. Some artists don't want their stuff shown. Um, that said, she actually has a new book coming out next month. So I'm going to get my hands on that for you guys. If you are into coloring fashion, you might really dig this. So this is really cool. So she goes through the fashions of, you know, the season and year. Now I am by no means fashionable. My idea of fashion is my off brand uh, yoga pants and shirt and shoes. And that's as far as my fashion goes. But these are all hand drawn by her. So th this is the um, designer's name and like their fall, winter, there was names in here I recognized, <laughs> but uh, like Michael Kors, I was like, I knew that one. I felt so stylish. But yeah, so the spring, summer, um, I thought that was really cute. You know, um, this is the Michael Kors spring, summer 2019. I mean, look at these. These are adorable. And she draws these. More Michael Kors. Uh, Coach. I know Coach. I would love to have one of their bags one day, but I can't justify that money. <laughs> um, but this is their fall winter. So this is really, really cool. Like that she draws these little signs. Um, and then you can sit and color these. Louis Vuitton. I knew that one. Gucci. I actually own a Gucci bag. Fun fact. Um, I'm deathly afraid to use it. <laughs> but I mean, look at this. At the stuff she draws. This is gorgeous. Talented, talented woman. Um... But yeah, all of these are just so cool. And like I said, she has a new one coming out in September. So you can't really get your hands on this one. However, the new one will be coming out. And you can sit here and color these. If you're really into like coloring fashion stuff, this would be really fun for you to do. I was going to do a dedicated flip through, but, but with so few left I decided I would throw it into my haul video show you guys kind of give you a teaser of this and then that way you could go check it out um you can actually see her website which is lauriebert.com but project print is what she is on Etsy so go check her out she does have other things on there too um not just coloring books but yeah you can check it out and it's loads of fun she is very very talented like wow <laughs> um so i was really excited to get this uh so thank you Kristen, for sneaking that in and i need to put my note on here just so i don't lose it um yeah anytime someone sends me happy mail <clears throat> and they include a note i always make sure to leave the note on that item because i don't want to forget who sent that to me um not that i i would but you never know uh, with my brain. <laughs> okay, so these just came. These are the Art Whale watercolor tubes, the infamous watercolors from Art Whale. Uh, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter did a review on these, and then they just disappeared from Amazon. <laughs> they finally came back in stock. I ordered them. Um, and I will be playing around with these on camera here very soon, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to try these. These are like one of those budget gems that Lindsay finds and shares with us. Uh, let's see. Okay. What is this cute little thing? Well, this is the ocean watercolors from the Art Spirits. I actually just finished doing a swatching video. These are handmade paints from a gal on um, Etsy. She sells them handmade by her. So the craftsmanship is unreal. Um, and yeah, this is the most, I still have the swatches right here. This, it's gorgeous. I mean, look at this thing. And she gives you a glitter that you can mix in if you want or use as just a wash. The the shimmer and the, oh my, they're, they're 
bound with honey, so they're very luscious, very thick if you want them to be. But yeah, I had just gotten this, and I did the swatching video right away. Um, isn't that such a cute little dainty tin? You you need to see the video, because the way these things are wrapped is just, oh my gosh. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, I have stacks everywhere. I'm afraid something's going to come crashing down on us. Ooh, all right, palettes. Let's talk palettes. I finally bought the Coran Dash palette, you guys. I'm cool now. <laughs> the reason I got this is it has a smooth and a rough side. Now, if you've heard me say it before, with watercolor pencils or ink tents, <clears throat> you can actually mix them by, you know, drawing it on here, drawing it on here, mixing them together. And then I thought, you know what? Maybe instead of telling you guys, I should just show you. So I need to go buy that. Now, I do have a cheap cutting board in my house that has the same rough texture that I've been using, but it's really stained and gross. So you guys never see it. So now I have this. Now, you can use the smooth side back here for all of your, you know, non-things that you need, to <laughs> need rough texture for. <laughs> I'm like, words, Corey, hello. But yeah, basically, they're telling you right here, like, your Neo colors, you can blend them on here. Museum, Museum Aquarelle, which is the... Color, uh, watercolor pencils and then acrylic gouache watercolors you can use on the other side because you don't need the rough surface so finally got one and I mean it was only like nine bucks but still I don't know um I ended up getting a new um pan so I have a big one but that's plastic oh my gosh I have no way to open these things with my nails so this is a porcelain palette Oh, there's nothing worse than that noise on camera. So, you've probably seen these actually quite a bit. It's a popular one. It's Medin. Um, it's a big brand. So, what I really liked about this was the deep wells all around. And then you have little mixing wells here. Or you can just mix in there. But this is a really decent palette. It's a 12 well palette. Um, this thing is hardy and heavy. And so I got this because I wanted something, porcelain just cleans easier, let's be real. Um, the plastic ones stain after a while. Oh, I'm just not even going to put that styrofoam back in there to save yourself and me. I'm just throwing the pile of trash behind me. Okay. Now for the Copics I ordered. So here's something funny. I've been getting 13 a month. Um, from CozyScrapbooking.com and I had ordered 13 but then they emailed me that one of the colors I ordered went out of stock last minute so they refunded me and I only got 12 and then funny enough a 13th shows up in one of my art subscription boxes isn't that cool I found that kind of funny um, so I got kind of an assortment of colors but like I said what I do is I look up color combos that people are using and I kind of just ordered the ones I don't have to do the combo. Um, normally I would swatch these, but because this haul still has quite a few things to show you, um, I'll swatch these privately. And let's just be real, I'm never going to dent that chart. <laughs> Every time I'm like, ooh, I got 13 and I fill it out, there's, it's just white. But I got a B16 Cyanide Blue, a B05 Process Blue, um, B00 Frost Blue, a BG45 Nile Blue, RV19 Red Violet, V17 Amethyst, BV00 Mob Shadow, BV01 Viola, uh, G07 Nile Green, G14 Apple Green, G12 Sea Green, and E37 Sepia. So that is my Copic assortment for the month. Again, CozyScrapbooking.com is by far the best place to go. They do not carry refills. They do run out of markers, like I said. I mean, I had ordered one and it was out of stock, but they are quick about restocking. 
and it's four dollars a sketch um i will gladly be patient for that one so uh from my blick order this month i just got the pencils that i embarrassingly was very low on um <laughs> I went to go pull some colors for a page I was working on and realized I had no peacock or beige. That was just wrong. I always have like two. like So um, that's what I ordered from Blick. And you're probably thinking, well, that's a waste of an order. No, no. <laughs> yeah, so let me grab what I got from Blick. Oh, it's on the pile that's furthest away. So you guys know I was on the fence between Pablo's and Pit Pastels for this month. And I went with the Pit Pastels. So that was what I really went to Blick for. These were just, I had to buy them, but I needed to break that free shipping barrier. <laughs> so here I go. Um, I did buy the Pit Pastels. Yes, they are still in plastic. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Like I said, it's been such a crazy month getting everyone ready for back to school and soccer and everything. Ugh, so annoying. Ooh, they smell so good. Um, but let me pull one out so you guys can see these things. All right. So here we have the Pit Pastel. You know, it says Faber Castell Germany. Does have its color number. Um, and then they are pre-sharpened color dipped in. I can't wait to play with these. Honestly, I will be doing a swatching on camera though. So let's save all that for then. But that's what I really went to Blick for. The pens, the extra Prismas were just a, by the way, I need these. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. And then also from Blick, I bought some M. Graham watercolors. Now, I've always wanted to try M. Graham. Let me get these open for you guys. Um, I've heard very good things. Uh, they are not cheap <laughs> at all. But I was like, you know what? I've, I've saved up some money and I want to try them. So again, these are made with honey, um, which seems to be an interesting theme. But what I ended up getting was the five color basic watercolor set. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, well, five colors. I don't think you understand what you can make with just five colors. It's it's quite impressive what this could turn into. And I actually plan to use these for my mixing um, lesson. Uh, I'm going to take all five because technically you have the potential of 25 colors. That said, um, let's see. Do they have the, yep, they have the pigment on here. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> I would hope so because M. Graham is a uh, high-end brand. High-end. Um, but they do have the pigment on here. So, yeah, basically what I plan to do is show you guys what you can make with these. So this is PR264, PBR7. Um, they do have the light fast rating on here. Ooh, they even tell you the um, vehicle. That's actually impressive. Um, PY 151. Yeah, so basically what I plan to do with these is I plan to take all five of these and create a color mixing chart and show you. Now this one here, this is the sap green. This actually has two pigments mixed in to make it. Um, the blue shouldn't. Yeah, it's just PB 29. So Ah, jets. Anytime you're mixing and you're new to mixing, you want to stick to all the ones that are just a pure pigment, single pigment. That said, I'm still going to make the mixing chart using this, knowing that it has two different pigments mixed in, and I will show you why when I do that. But I am going to show you with these because this is a very expensive set. Now, the point of the mixing chart is to show you that five colors can turn into 25 colors. So you may spend 40 or 50 bucks on these, but you really didn't just buy five colors. You actually bought a lot more than you think if you're willing to mix. Um, so that was one reason I bought these uh, for the mixing. And well, I just wanted to try M. Graham. I really want to try Daniel Smith too. I'm going down the watercolor rabbit hole, guys. So 
come join me. Um, and then uh, Blick just had a little promo. If you bought these, they sent you a watercolor coloring book. Not coloring books, sketchbook. It's 140 pound, 300 GSM. The GSM is actually what matters. Uh, but yeah, this is a stellar little book here. Um, I don't think it's, it will lay flat, but it will in the center. But I like that it has this little thing here. I can put my brush. And then in the back, it has a little expandable thing. Yeah, it's just a cute little swatch book. You know, you can use it to test out some color palettes, you know, or actually sketch in it if you want. I have a Paul Rubin one like this, too, uh, that I got as part of a promo. But keep an eye out. We're going to play around with these and turn five colors into 25. Um, that reminds me. Gentle. The Art Whale. I will not be reviewing these because Lindsay knocked it out of the park. I actually bought these because of her review. However, I am going to also use these for a mixing tutorial because some of, not everyone can afford to buy these. So I'll be taking the ones out of here that are just a pure pigment, not mixed out of the 24. I am not making a mixed chart with 24 colors. Mm -mm. <laughs> Can't even math in my head what that comes out to, but it's a lot. Uh, so I'm just going to take the ones out of here that are pure pigments, and I'll show you how to mix those as well. Um, so don't worry. Like, you don't need to go buy M. Graham to join the fun. Okay. Last thing out of this basket. But I wish it was the last thing. So, unrelated to the coloring and art side, um, while I was on scrapbook.com, I freaking, it's a dangerous site, guys. I got this die because I have a new die cutting machine and it's butterflies and well I just felt like buying some butterflies and it was on sale. <laughs> so random little thing I just tossed in there. Okay. I also got my Felissimos for the month. They're still in their box, but here we go. Um this is the only reveal you will get. You'll have to wait till swatching day. Oh my gosh, I have so much trash off to the side of me. All this packaging. If someone walked into my room right now, it looks like my my haul is a lot more crazy than it is. But yes, uh, this is the latest Felissimo set. It just came. I'll be swatching these on camera. Give you a quick sneak peek. <gasps> That's all you get. Have to wait for swatching day. But I did get those. Then I do have another thing of Happy Mail from my darling friend Evelyn, who is spoiling me. And she is, by the way, the sweetest woman you will ever meet here on YouTube. Um, I will be swatching these on camera. And in fact, I may the video may come out before or after this haul. I'm not sure. Uh, the reason she got these for me um, I'm taking Lindsay, the Frugal Crafters, watercolor class, and it was with Derwent Watercolor. I didn't have them, so I was just bringing my Albrecht Durer in the same colors, and that sweet woman um, bought me the Derwent Watercolors and sent them as my back-to-school supplies. <laughs> so that was, that was extra cute. Like, I, I love that woman to death. She is incredibly generous. Um... If you have not met her here on ColorTube, or if you see her in a live chat, say hi to her. She is the sweetest person you'll ever meet. Um, and yeah, I will be doing a swatching video for these just because they are so pretty. I've always wanted to try the Derwent watercolor. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to swatch these with you guys. And I will be using these in Lindsay's class. Um, so thank you, Evelyn. You'll get a, a big thanks also in my swatching video. Okay. We're almost there. Oh, and speaking of Evelyn, <laughs> um, she also sent me the Windsor and Newton colored pencils. I've already filmed the swatching video. Whoops. Um, for these bad boys, but I swatched these. I was having a bad day though. I kept breaking the tips, and it's not even the pencil's fault. It was just me. <laughs> So yeah, these are the new Windsor and Newton colored pencils. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say new. They've been out for a little while now. But she sent these to me and they are very pretty. 
very pretty pencils and I do have a swatching video so you'll be able to check that out where I swatch them and kind of chat about them a little more but thank you Evelyn these are absolutely gorgeous um and I actually can't wait to play with them they're they're actually really soft pencils um surprising you know because you know you guys know when I say soft I I talk prismacolor soft but those layer up and they're silky smooth when they layer. So yeah, I, I really like those. Okay. And then Evelyn again. <laughs> I have them all stacked at once. <laughs> Sent me the grayscale. So this is the 100 grayscale images from Molly Harrison. Um, I actually do not have this one. So, or any of the books that it was compiled from so it includes because she sells them in individual books and then she comes up with a compilation so this has the a world of fairies autumn magic enchanted sea <coughs> excuse me and fairy coloring grayscale these are amazing images and a lot of these will be used this fall but i mean look at these they're dark grayscale yes um but not intimidating very very beautiful like and she always signs them I mean like that's 2007 um but I mean look at this amazing work 2011 so you can kind of see on these that one is adorable that would have been so perfect for Mother's Day just cuddling her little mermaid baby oh but yeah, I can't wait to color in this. Um, I will be using that this one this fall. Uh, so you'll actually see this in my fall haul as well because it has the autumn magic uh, images in it. So that is one to keep an eye out for. Thank you, Evelyn, my dear. Okay, let me get... <laughs> I'm almost done, I swear. <laughs> okay. Wow, that was loud. What on earth is this? Um, it's loud. It's plastic. But I actually bought this for a purpose. Okay. So, I was reminded of these thanks to Jamie over at Jamie Fran Colors. Uh, she's here on YouTube. So, I have been binding my PDF books using the cinch. While I don't mind the cinch, it can be rather obnoxious at times. So, I've been getting lazy and I'll take my PDF books and just clip them with a clip here. But the problem is, is the pages aren't protected and I have nails so I can't even get the clip open. So, I had noticed she had done some PDF books and put them in these. These are the old school. Um, if I can get it out of there. Remember when you were a kid and you had like these little binder clips you would use? You'll put on the, if I can open it. So you'll put the pages in here and then you use this to slide it into the sleeve here. And then you can just flip through and then you can pull out each page because that was one thing I was having problem with with the cinch. I would bind it here, but then it was stuck in here. I couldn't just pull it out and work on that page. So now I can put them into these. Um, and these are longer, like uh, example. So here's my page. And as you can see, I'll flip it over. See, this is longer. You could cut them, um, and I probably will cut them to make them fit, but I'm going to take all the ones that books only um, and put them in there. Now, individual PDFs, I actually put in page protectors and binders, but yeah, I got like a pack of 12, and it was a back-to-school sale, so I'll be slowly moving all those over. I uh, don't even know where to put this. And uh, speaking of the cinch, I actually might sell my cinch so if anyone is interested in possibly purchasing it let me know okay another thing in loud plastic Ugh. so in my channel announcement I mentioned that I will be doing watercolor pages and templates so 
I had mentioned graphite paper. This is graphite paper. This super black side is the graphite side. This not so black side is the, well, not graphite side. So basically what you do, if you print out a template or say you have a coloring book page that you wanna transfer onto watercolor paper and you don't have a light box, you use this. So you actually put this side down on your watercolor paper, the page that you want to transfer on top, so watercolor paper is below, and then you trace it, and this will transfer it onto your watercolor paper. It saves you the hassle because some light boxes are just not strong enough to show through a very thick watercolor paper, and your pressure as you're applying it will determine how much or how dark the lines are. Now, if you don't plan to use the page again, you can outline it with like a, you know, a gel pen so you can tell what you've outlined. If not, you can use um, one of those diamond painting tools, you know, the little bulbs at the end. Uh, they also make tracing tools. You can use just about anything with a blunt surface to just trace over the lines. Um, I recommend, actually, and what I tend to do a lot is I use my Caran Dash Full Colorless Blender because if I still want to use that other coloring page, I haven't destroyed the page by using, you know, a pen or something, but it leaves a slight film over just the borders of that and I can see it. So I can see what I have colored or transferred. And um, you can be selective. So say a coloring page is too busy for watercolor work, you can actually just do the outline. You don't have to fill in all the gaps. So you can also use this to transfer over to marker paper if you want. Um, it's not just watercolors. Uh, I use it predominantly for watercolors and I will be using it to demonstrate once I have some of my watercolor sketches ready to go, how to use this and transfer it over. I'm also going to show you guys how to transfer just coloring book pages that you want on watercolor paper because I've had a few messages from people saying, you know, I've tried to use watercolors in my coloring books. I'm getting frustrated. Um, watercolor is a finicky medium. It needs to be for its full effect on watercolor paper. Like if you want to be able to go back and lift the color, manipulate it after the fact, if you're using a coloring book page, it's not going to happen. Um, even a good card stock, it's not going to work. You need watercolor paper. There's a reason watercolor paper <laughs> exists. Not just aside from the fact, the fact that it's so thick it's not buckling. It actually helps you at get the full performance out of those watercolors. So keep that in mind. Okay, I think we are at the end. We are. Okay, we are there. I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. This isn't, this is a big haul. Whatever, it happens. Okay, so I did get some books. Now this one was actually sent to me uh, also by my lovely, lovely friend, Evelyn. And this is the Creative Haven Country Scenes book. And I will admit, I didn't even think about this one, but look at this. So this kind of brings me to the point of watercolors. This is not watercolor paper, but could you imagine if I transferred this using graphite paper to watercolor paper? How cool this could be if I turn this into a watercolor painting. So, I mean, this artist, almost begs for these to be watercolors, um, just with the design elements. Very open, very flowy. Like, look at that one. That amount of space alone, you know. Um, that one too. I mean, a lot of these could easily be transferred. See, like, even with the way the trees are done, that would be so fun to do watercolor splotches in there, all this. And again, you can only... You can transfer as much or as little as you want. Um, this one would be killer in watercolors. All these water scenes. I mean, all that. So I will actually probably use this book as an example of what to transfer. Because this has some really good pages for that. Look at that one. That would be amazing to transfer to watercolor paper. The effect you could do on this water. I mean, you can reflect all these trees right here. 
you know, the boat. I mean, if you suck at making water with water, watercolors, water with watercolors, um, that would be good practice. So this will be a really fun one to play around with, especially for that technique. Now I've already done a flip through of this one, so I'm not going to force you guys to watch that again. But this is just the 50 Stylish Mandalas from Camellia Angel Cova. Um, I, I will admit, if she releases a book, I buy it. I'm weak. <laughs> but adorable. As always, beautiful mandalas. I haven't colored in it yet. I plan to. I actually plan to use some of my um, Bic Intensity and Amazon Basics markers in here. Mixed with gel pens and just try something a little different. Like I said, the reason I'm not using my Copics and other alcohol markers is Create Space bleeds really bad and it tears up your nibs. Um, using a Copic in here, oh, that, the poor nib, poor nib. So yeah, uh, that's why I had bought like Bic Intensity and Amazon Basics markers to try in here because you can still blend them um, and they work fine on this paper and they're not going to tear it up <clears throat> and they still evaporate in time. There may be bleeding, though. But yeah, guys, that is my haul. Um, I got a lot of good stuff from my art subscription boxes. You know, I got some odds and ends that I picked up myself. Um, I did get a lot of happy mail this month. And thank you to the happy mail senders um, and givers. <laughs> One was just given to my husband, and he brought it home. He's like, here, got something for you. <laughs> but... Um, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, anytime you guys send me stuff, I always mark it so I know who gave it to me. And I try to show it on camera, whether it be a swatching video or a flip through or something, just to show my appreciation. Um, I, I did get a comment the other day that they thought I was showing off my happy mail. So if you ever see me do a happy mail swatching video. I'm not bragging or showing it off by any means. I am sharing my appreciation to the person who took time and their money to send someone whom they've never met a gift in the mail because it truly means the world to me when I get those things and I open them. I'm not going to lie. I actually get very teary-eyed when people send me stuff. Um, and I just want to publicly thank them. So if you ever see those, please do not take them as me bragging or showing it off it is me thanking that person publicly for being so amazing and i always ask anyone who sends me happy mail if they are okay with that i've had people who aren't and that is fine too but that's all that is um but i wanted to make that clear because that comment had really well it bothered me <laughs> Lack of a better word, it kind of bothered me because that is not me at all. I'm not that type of person, but I do think when someone goes that extra effort to send something and is so generous that they should be thanked publicly um, if they want to be. And by I don't mind doing it because I am honestly honored that someone would spend their own money and send me something. Like, truly, I am. Um, and I just yeah I, like I said I, I literally do cry when I get those things because it is just so generous um so please keep that in mind I do have quite a few swatching videos coming up here in the future with happy mail so if you ever see those please do not take them that way um I might even start putting a disclaimer on those videos <laughs> but I want you guys to know that so yes this is a Biggish haul. It's not as bad as last month. Um, but like I said, I am saving up to buy the bigger things. I bought the Pit Pastels. Uh, I, you know, a lot of my stuff was from my art boxes. And then honestly, all that stuff from scrapbook.com, I didn't actually spend that much. It was a lot of stuff, but I really didn't spend that much. Um, this month I spent a lot less than I normally have ever. So just keep that in mind, despite the fact that it looks like chaos. Um, <laughs> but a lot of it came from the art subscription boxes and just odds and ends I bought, but they were all pretty cheap. And then I just had a lot of happy mail this month. But yeah, guys, uh, 
that is this haul. Now there will be a fall haul video that we've posted. I did buy some new fall books, but I'm also going to pull out all, all of my old fall books and kind of do a combo video of, hey, here's the new stuff. Hey, here's the old stuff. And this is what I am going to color for the next three months. So it'll be a lot of fun. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. And until next time, take care.